In addition um, to that Andrew Gillum race last night, uh, here's another weird turn, and it's also about electoral politics. Um, one of the broader trends that is happening in Democratic Party politics this year for the, for the midterms is that there's a whole bunch of people running on the Democratic side for Congress uh, who are people who have national security backgrounds, um, people whose background is in law enforcement, intelligence, military, the diplomatic corps, other national security roles. Uh, for example, just last night in Florida, a former U.S. ambassador, excuse me, a former U.N. ambassador um, won a congressional primary in the district that is currently represented by Republican Congressman uh, Ron DeSantis. Ron DeSantis had to give up his seat in Congress in order to become the Republican candidate for governor. We now know he will be running against this guy, Andrew Gillum. Uh, but in his district, in the Ron DeSantis district, it will be Bill Clinton's U.N. ambassador, Nancy Soderberg, who will be running as the Democrat to try to flip that seat from red to blue. Uh, another national security veteran, a guy named Chris Hunter, he's a former FBI agent and a former DOJ prosecutor. He won a primary last night in Florida as well to try to unseat Republican Congressman Gus Bill Arrakis. Um, and, and another district where Democrats uh, that's another district where Democrats are, are, are seen as having a, a real shot at flipping that seat from red to blue with this candidate, Chris Hunter. Um, but that dynamic is not Florida specific. Democrats have a whole lot of candidates all across the country, particularly in potentially flippable districts where the Democratic candidate comes from a national security background. And that's interesting in terms of strategy and was that a deliberate plan by you know, the Democratic Party? What does that say about national security? professionals and their desire to get into electoral politics and the Trump, you could analyze it from a lot of different reasons, a lot of different angles. But tonight, we have just learned from some really interesting reporting by Spencer Ackerman at the Daily Beast that the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee, so the committee in the Democratic Party in charge of electing House candidates, they have just warned, given a warning to all of the Democratic Party's congressional candidates across the country who have a national security background, people who have security clearances or who have had security clearances in the past because of their past work. The Democratic Party has now just officially warned all of those candidates that they should be prepared for the Trump administration to potentially illegally leak their security clearance applications so that those applications can be used against them by the Republican Party in the general election. The reason for the warning is because it has happened apparently once already to one Democratic candidate. The New York Times re breaking the news late last night that this candidate, Abigail Spanberger, she's a former CIA case officer. She's a Democratic congressional candidate in Virginia. She's the candidate Democrats have nominated to try to unseat Republican Congressman Dave Bratt in Virginia. Uh, Abigail Spanberger apparently had her full unredacted security clearance application not just released by the Trump administration without her permission, which is illegal, uh, but the Trump administration apparently released it to a Republican opposition research effort, um, which then did immediately start using that security clearance application against her in her congressional campaign. I mean, applications for security clearance are incredibly intrusive and incredibly personal on purpose. They are designed to ferret out anything that a foreign adversary might try to use to blackmail you, to get you to hand over classified information that you'll now have access to because of your security clearance. So application forms for a security clearance are like deep, deep background checks. And they're specifically looking for anything that anybody might try to use against you. So it's, you know, it's medical information. It's relationship information. It's very detailed questions about like, you know, have you ever smoked pot, right? It's, it's very detailed information about your family, about your extended family. It's super, super intrusive. And the government agency responsible for issuing your clearance is obviously supposed to protect that information in your security clearance application, right? Not just because it's intensely private, it's because by definition, this is intensely private information about people who are obtaining security clearances. <laughs> so it's important to keep it secure. It is information that is of a, a personal nature, but it's also, of, uh, it's also of a sensitive nature when it comes to national security. That's why, for example, all journalists know you can't file a Freedom of Information Act request to get somebody's security clearance application.
I mean, you can try, but if you get anything back from the agency that you're FOIAing, it's whatever you get back is going to be redacted within an inch of its life to protect the sensitive information in that document, and rightly so. At least that's the way it's supposed to work. But for some reason, the Trump administration responded to a FOIA request by this Republican group looking for information about this Democratic congressional candidate, ex-CIA officer Abigail Spanberger, and what the Trump administration sent that Republican group in response to their FOIA request was Spanberger's complete, totally unredacted application for a security clearance, including her full social security number, her entire medical history, right, right everything. The reason Abigail Spanberger found out this had happened is because thereafter, the Republican Party and a PAC run by House Speaker Paul Ryan happily started shopping this document to reporters and started using it in political attacks against her in her congressional campaign. I mean, that, that is a legitimately new thing in politics. We're all supposed to be sort of jaded observers of politics, right? We're all supposed to think, oh, there's nothing new under the sun. This is new. This is new. I mean, maybe we should have expected it anyway. It was also new when President Trump decided to yank security clearances from former CIA director John Brennan because of his role in the Russia investigation and the president doesn't like the Russia investigation. Well, apparently this is what comes next after you break that seal. Now the Republican Party is using this stuff in campaigns. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.